What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to do a flip through and review on Mildred Payne's Secret Pocket Oracle, the deluxe edition. Now I will put a few videos on the screen of the difference from the, I guess the original edition and the deluxe edition from what I can remember off the top of my head. On the deluxe edition, the cards are just a little bit bigger than the original. And there are also four extra cards in the deluxe edition. Now, even though this one is supposedly bigger than the other one, they're still fairly tiny. So these are normal playing card size. And the other edition, I can't even imagine how small it would be compared to this size, but it is fairly smaller. These are the bags. It is not edged. Now, the fact that there's 88 cards, I really like because it's a chunky deck. For the most part, all of the cards are going to have their title and then their number on the top. And then, of course, in the center would be the image that's being depicted. Let me just get a little bit closer for you guys. So we have feedings, time, pack. There is also a digital guidebook. I don't want to say the names of all the cards because like you guys can see it there. I do like that some of these cards have like splatters of what would appear to be blood on here, which is really cool. The eye. And I feel like this deck is, it gives me more like Lenormand deck vibes, except there's a lot more cards in here than what you would typically find in a Lenormand deck. I think the Lorman decks have like 30 cards or so. Maybe a little bit more or a little bit less. But for the most part, this just seems to be very self explanatory. But you also have to kind of, I mean, if you're not going to use the guidebook, you kind of have to get in your thoughts and. I guess in a way your imagination, like different ways of thinking of what something can symbolize, especially when it comes to your reading. Oh my God, I love this cat's whiskers. That's so cute. They're just all over the place. Like they just woke up. You know what I mean? Like here, for example, flower. What type of flower is it? It kind of looks like a tulip, but it also looks like a rose. What does a rose symbolize? Why is this flower been cut? Why is the flower bleeding? Things like that. So, you know, just to think more into what you have on the card here, because a lot of people prefer to have um, keywords that already tell you, you know, what the card or the picture is supposed to mean. But here it just tells you what is in the card. Mirror, and there's a mirror right there. So it kind of forces you or pushes you to think I guess outside of the box, or in this case, um, within your intuition, instead of outside of your intuition, that doesn't make sense. But you know, it kind of like challenges you, like what else do you feel or think a mirror would symbolize, particularly in relation to like the reading that you're doing, you know what I mean? So that's why I really like this deck. It's very simple, but yet it can be, it feels like a chameleon deck. By chameleon, I mean it would blend in very well with various forms of reading or using the deck. You know, like chameleons, they blend, they adapt to their surroundings, at least like in the form that they blend. It's mainly for like security and safety and stuff. But you know what I'm trying to say. You can also use it for like numerology too, if you want to just focus on the numbers coming out. But I personally feel like it, it would be a fairly easy deck to use. Do any of you guys have this deck? Do you like it? Why or why not? Let me know in the comments down below so we can discuss and chat. Do you have any questions uh, for me as opposed to like how I would use this deck or anything like that? I don't mind doing a video on particular decks that I own. 
to show you guys like how I use it or how I would study with it. You know what, I think I still have to do my how I study tarot um, video or how I, well, I don't know if I have a how I study oracle video. I'm just gonna include like any other types of decks within my how I study tarot video. You know, just to, just to keep everything fresh in my mind. And also to show you guys how I study. How I study when it comes to divination work, to, um, like I said, keep it fresh in my mind. Keep that, I guess, those muscles still working and active. Instead of having them, like, fall asleep and things like that. You know what I mean, jelly beans? Arrow. Okay, with arrow, what else would you think of an arrow? Direction, destination, a target. You know, why do people shoot arrows? To hunt. What are you hunting for? Like, just get really in the nitty gritty of what you're seeing in the card. As simple as something might look, there could be more there. Other than like pip decks, because I don't get, <laughs> I don't get anything of seeing like six plain cups and nothing else. Here, a shovel, I get a lot more looking at a shovel than like looking at, I don't know, seven pentacles, like just the pentacles. I know what seven of pentacles is, but like it's the artwork, the symbolism. That, or the artwork in general that helps me remember or see the symbolism. Does that make sense? Now, I do want to pull a random card at the end of the video. Just to give you an idea of like how I would break down a card that we get in a reading. Whoa, well, a comet? This kind of looks like a, a person or a star with like their head on fire or something. Curious what card we're gonna get. S scourge? S scourge? How do you say that? Is it Scourge or Scourge? Let me know in the comments down below. I love books. I love to read. I love fairy tale books. Wish, Aladdin, and the genie. Now, I wonder if the extra cards are just the ones towards the end. I wouldn't know because I would have to have like the original to know what the extra cards are, right? Scare up. Okay, that was the last card in the deck. I believe the backs are. Reversible. Did I show you guys the wax? I feel like I I did, but it's probably me thinking about my haul video, thinking that I did. So these are the backs. They are reversible. Now as far as shuffling goes, even though it's 88 cards, it's a poker card size, so it's still comfortable to hold in the hands. Comfortable overhand. They don't stick. It is, it's kind of like a semi-glossy finish. Not super shiny, slidey glossy kind of, but there is still some type of shine there. It's not matte, but it's not glossy either. It's kind of like in the middle. Card stack wise, most if not all of um, Deviant Moon's decks kind of just have the making playing cards, typical card stock. So... Although it's not as bendy as the uh, the Llewellyn cardstock. So it still has, it has flexibility, but it also has sturdiness to it. Does that make sense? All right, now let me shuffle the deck and see what card we get. And then I'll just give you a breakdown of how I would read or interpret that card. Not in like any particular reading right now. I guess it'll just be in general. But just to like break down what I would see the meaning in that card or that image that we get. 
Let's get this one. Okay, and we have the door. All right, so, ooh, 33. That's my, uh, that's one of my lucky numbers, but that's also my, um, uh, what is it called? Life number? I forget. Uh, it's either the birthday one or the name one, or both together, but it always ends up being 33. I know it's the master number, which is cool. Um, okay, where was I? So, door. How I would break it down? Okay, again, it'll be totally based on the reading, but this is just me reading it just as a door. Do I see or feel the door is closed? Do I see or feel the door is empty? Where am I focusing on? Am I focusing on the window? Am I inside looking to the door? Or am I outside looking at the door? Am I focusing on the window? Why? Or am I focusing on the doorknob and the keyhole specifically? Why? Why do I think those things are popping up in my head? And how does that relate to the reading that I would try to give? Now a door for me would symbolize a way out, an opportunity, an option that you have to change whatever you're going through. An indication kind of saying that it's time to move on and close that door per se those are just some of the things that I would see when like a door would come up but again it's dependent on like the type of reading that I would be giving but those are just like some of the stuff that I would think about the symbolism of a door there is likely a way more symbolism and information out there and what a door could mean, but it's all dependent on your reading, you know, just to make the connection. So that's how I would read these cards in particular that just have a door and the keywords, so to speak, is just what the image is in this case, door. I think that is everything. If I forgot anything, uh, or if you would like me to do a video on studying this deck, like breaking down each card via my interpretation, let me know in the comments down below. It's a fairly big deck, so I probably have to do multiple videos on studying this deck in particular. But yeah, if I forgot anything, let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like this video, and if you stuck to this part of the video, leave the skull emoji in the comments. That way I know. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.